So now that your scenes are all set up and your computer's configured for live streaming, we can move forward with your very first live stream. Let's go back to the YouTube live streaming page for our event that we were on earlier. If you can't find that, you can always go back to your creator studio, look under live streaming and then events. And then if you still have that event that you created, you can click on edit. And now we can go ahead and set up our first test live stream. So I'm just gonna call this test stream. The time doesn't really matter. You can add a description if you want to. You could really put anything you want in here, but you would wanna describe briefly what the stream is gonna be about and then maybe put in some contact information so people know to subscribe and go to your website and all that stuff. If you have a schedule for your live stream, you could put that in there as well. I'm gonna make sure mine's set to private because I don't actually wanna stream this since this is just a tutorial. I'm gonna make sure it's set to custom. You can add some keywords down here at the bottom. If you're doing drawing and painting and art and stuff like that, you would wanna add those in. These are just automatic keywords. This isn't what I would add for my live stream, so just kind of ignore these. Same goes for the description. Let's look under advanced settings. If there's anything you want to change here for this particular live stream, you could do that. We looked at all these settings earlier, but again, you may want to change these from time to time. Let's look under monetization. If you want monetization to be on, make sure it's turned on. Now let's go to ingestion settings. You could think of ingestion like YouTube is eating the live stream from OBS. So OBS captures the live stream and then it sends it to YouTube and YouTube slurps it up and it delivers it to your audience. So you can have multiple cameras or multiple live stream sources. Let's say if you had two computers, you could live stream from both of them, but typically you're just gonna wanna use one. So we wanna look here under main camera. You can add a thumbnail, which is a little image that can advertise your live stream before it starts. The suggested size for that is 1280 by 720. I'm not gonna add anything for that right now since this is just a test. We wanna choose the maximum sustained bit rate of our encoder and we have it set to 4,000, so we wanna make sure that we choose this range here, 3,000 to 6,000. I'm not using 60 frames per second, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. Now, if you're gonna be live streaming a lot, you may wanna eventually check out custom ingestion because that can save you a bit of time. You can actually save ingestion presets for particular kinds of streams. But we'll go ahead and just leave this at basic for now. We'll wanna look under select your encoder, and we'll set that to other encoders because we're using OBS. We've already configured our encoder, so we don't need to worry about that. And then now we wanna look at our stream name. This is also our stream key. We wanna copy this and we wanna paste this into OBS. So let's go back to OBS. Let's go to settings. Let's go to stream and we'll paste in our stream key right here. We'll click apply and then okay. I also wanna mention in regards to stream keys, if you're doing a quick stream using stream now, Stream Now has an entirely different stream key. So if you're going between streaming now and doing events, you'll need to make sure that you have the right stream key pasted in. So I'm gonna go back to my event settings and now let's add some cards. Cards will pop up on the screen and you can advertise videos and you can also link to your website or products that you offer. So for instance, I can add a video. Let's say I wanna add my most recent live stream as a card, I'll click on create card. I'll click on add card again. This time I'm gonna add a playlist. I'm gonna add my Corel Painter training course. And now that'll be a card. And this is an example of what cards will look like here. You can see their little previews and somebody can click on that preview and open up another video if they want to. Now let's go to live control room. The live control room can be used to preview your live stream. You can preview the video and audio before you go live. You can start and stop your live stream. You can monitor the health of your live stream. You can set broadcast alerts if you've canceled the event or delayed it. And then you can get stats such as how many people are watching your live stream. So as I mentioned earlier, when you're live streaming, you'll have to start the stream in OBS and then you'll have to ingest that stream into YouTube to broadcast it on YouTube. So it's kind of a two part process and we'll go over that. So let's go ahead and do our first test stream. So we wanna start with the live control room open here. It says we are not receiving data from your encoder. So what that means is we need to jump on over to OBS and make sure that you have a scene selected. Make sure you're sharing the right screen. Make sure that you're getting a level from your microphone and that anything that you want to be muted is muted. Make sure that your webcam is working. If you want to, you can even do a recording just to test and see how your recording will come out. And then when you're ready to send the stream to YouTube, go ahead and click on Start Streaming. Now, if you're doing a quick stream, Start Streaming will start streaming immediately without having to go through this extra step of launching it in YouTube, so keep that in mind. I'm gonna click on Start Streaming. 
and it's going to start sending the stream to YouTube so I can go ahead and hide OBS and I can bring up my live control room. I'm now receiving a signal here on YouTube and it says my stream status is good. So that's excellent. If you're getting something less than good, you may want to lower your bit rate or try some of the tips that I'll give you a little bit later in this tutorial. So the next step will be to preview our stream and you might want to plug in headphones at this point because when you preview your stream, it's going to play everything you say back so that you'll be able to hear what it sounds like. But then if that's going through your speakers, that's going to be picked up by your mic and it's going to create a feedback loop. So go ahead and plug in some headphones or be prepared to mute your computer. I've gone ahead and plugged in headphones. I'm going to click on preview and click on OK. Now if we scroll on down here to the preview player, this is where it's going to show us our stream. And it'll take a minute to prepare, so just be patient and wait. Go ahead and click on play. And now we'll be able to listen to our stream and see how it looks. There's going to be a bit of a delay, so you'll be seeing yourself in the past. And whatever you say will take a moment to catch up with the live stream. If you can hear yourself and you can see yourself and everything looks good to you, then you can go ahead and pause the preview. You can also mute it here if you want to. And then you can go ahead and start streaming and that'll make the live stream go live on YouTube. Now, I have my stream set to private, so no one will be able to see it. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. Wait a few seconds for the live notification before you start speaking. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm doing something in my live stream when I start off. So it may take a minute for people to join your live stream. And in that time, you can do something like do a little doodle or have something on screen like a title screen. But right now, if I were live on YouTube, I'd be live streaming. That'll be my little test. So then when I'm done live streaming, if I want to stop the live stream, I'll need to do two things. I'll need to go back to YouTube and click on stop streaming first and then OK. Then I'll need to go back to OBS and I'll need to stop streaming in OBS. And you want to do it in that order. So now that I'm done streaming, what I have is the live stream that people watched while it was live. I have the recording of the live stream that I can watch now on my computer. And I have a version that will show up on YouTube if I want it to be public or I want it to be private. I can make that decision, but I have the live stream as it was seen on YouTube as well. So the YouTube version will take some time to process. You'll have to be patient. Depending on the length of your live stream, it may take some time to fully process in YouTube. In the meantime, you can watch your recorded offline version. Now, while I was live streaming, if I wanted to keep the live control room open, I could have monitored some stats. It would have shown me the peak concurrent viewers. So if you wanted to know how many people at any one time are watching, it would show you here. It'll show you how long that you've been live streaming for. And of course, the health of your stream is always good to keep an eye on. During your first stream, it's always nice to know whether or not you can be seen and heard clearly. So don't be afraid to ask your audience whether or not they can see and hear you. If there's any problems with the stream, they'll let you know. And it's always better to just stop the stream and restart it and fix those problems then carry on with a problematic live stream. I recommend that you use live streams as an opportunity to engage with your audience. Make sure to keep an eye on the chat log and answer questions. It makes sense to read the questions out loud because if you're not actually recording the chat log in the live stream, then when people are watching the recorded version later, they're going to be able to see what you're talking about. If you just respond to questions without reading the question, then people who are watching later aren't gonna know what the question was. So make sure to read questions, interact with your audience, and keep an eye on the number of viewers because if a lot of people are watching, you know, you want to step your game up. If there isn't anybody watching and it's really late at night, then you know that you might as well end your live stream and then try it maybe on a different day or a different time of day. So now let's talk about some common problems that you might be having while you're live streaming. The first is no audio. And what you can do is you can make sure that you have an audio level set here. You can make sure that the cable's plugged in on your microphone, that your audio device internally and externally has the volume turned up to a level that you can hear. You can make sure that your microphone is selected by going to settings, audio, and make sure that it's chosen here under microphone device. You can also make sure that it's not muted. You might have audio, but maybe the signal's too low. Again, you can make sure that it's turned up all the way. You can also go to edit, advanced audio properties, and you can boost the volume of the microphone. You may also want to look at the level of volume in your system settings on your computer, whether you're using Macintosh or Windows, or you might want to look at your sound card settings because maybe you can boost the volume there. 
You can also try getting closer to your mic or seeing if there's a way that you can turn up the volume or the gain on your microphone. If you're getting a lot of feedback or echo or unwanted noise, you wanna make sure that you plug in headphones or mute your system audio, and that'll prevent your speakers from playing into your mic and then creating this feedback loop, which will destroy your audio. And if you have any secondary mics, like on your webcam, you'll wanna make sure you disable that microphone so that you don't have two microphones going at the same time. And now let's talk about laggy streams. Laggy means that the stream keeps starting and stopping because the person who's streaming doesn't have a fast enough internet connection or they're using too many resources when they're doing the stream. So there's a number of different ways we can fix a laggy stream. First of all, we can lower the bit rate and the resolution of the stream. So as I mentioned earlier, there's kind of a high and low range. You can set it towards the lower end of that range if you like, or you can reduce the resolution to something like 1280 by 720. You wanna make sure that you close any unnecessary applications because that's going to eat up your RAM and your computer processor. And if it's stuff that's connected to the internet, that's gonna eat up your bandwidth. So close any unused applications, close any background stuff, Make sure you disconnect from a VPN if you're using that. Close your email, close Skype, close your messenger, Facebook, all that stuff. It's nice to have the live stream dashboard open, but if that's showing you the preview, then you're also using up a lot of bandwidth that way. So you can make sure to close your live stream dashboard if that might be interfering. Closing the live stream dashboard is not going to stop the live stream. You can always get back to the live stream dashboard and within that you can stop the live stream there. Another tip is to plug into your router or to your modem rather than use wireless if you can actually connect your computer with a Cat5 or LAN cable to the back of your router that'll give you a better connection because it doesn't have to go through wireless. You can try lowering the size and the resolution of your painting and that'll use less computer resources. If there's a lot of movement on the screen, then that's going to create lag. So make sure to not talk while you're panning or while you're using really big brushes, in fact, Using really big brushes, I find, can create a lot of lag, especially on a high resolution canvas. You can also try to minimize panning and zooming because that uses up a lot of bandwidth. Think about it like the less the screen changes overall, the less bandwidth you're gonna use. So really if all it's changing is just the area that you're drawing on, the rest of the screen is pretty much gonna stay static and not use a lot of bandwidth. When you start panning things around, then it starts to change the screen and it makes things laggy. If you're using a wireless connection, you can optimize that wireless connection by making sure that you have the best signal possible. So think about where your router is placed and where your receiver is on your computer. You can invest in better wireless technology. I know that's helped me several times to boost my internet speeds. And if your internet is just too slow altogether, you could think about upgrading to a faster internet speed because that'll make a huge difference. So that's just about everything you need to know about how to live stream. Really quickly to wrap this up, I just wanna show you how you can do a quick stream because that has a lot fewer steps, but there's less customization available to you. So let's go ahead and go back to our YouTube live streaming and let's go to stream now. And there's a lot less to set up here. All we really need to do is we can put in a title and a description, and this will get recycled every time we do a live stream. So you may wanna copy and paste some different titles and descriptions if you're gonna do different kinds of live streams. You can see what I added here. I added a short description of what the live stream's about. I have a link to my older live streams, and I have a call to action asking people to subscribe. And then I have a link to my website. So that's kinda of how you would use this description area here. If I go to stream options, I have all of my options that I can set for monetization and cards. Then I wanna look down here at the bottom for my stream name and key. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go back to OBS and I'm going to go to the settings. I'm going to go to stream and I'm going to paste that new key into there. This is a different key than the one I had before. I'll click apply, I'll go to okay. And then now rather than having to go to the live control room to start my live stream, all I have to do is click start streaming and it'll automatically start streaming to YouTube. Now this isn't going to be private, this is going to be a public instant live stream. So if I were to click this, I would be live streaming instantly. I wouldn't have to do that second step of starting it through the YouTube live control panel. So because I don't wanna live stream and this is just a tutorial, I'm not gonna click this, but let's just pretend I did. I did my live stream and then I, if I wanna go ahead and stop that live stream, then I'd click on stop streaming. And then exactly like it did earlier, you'd have your recorded version on your computer, and then you'd have your version on YouTube that would appear a little bit later. 
So now you should be set up pretty well for live streaming. If you do have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comments for this video. As a final note, I just want to talk about some of the possibilities of live streaming. You can, of course, do solo drawing like I do, where you just kind of hang out and draw and chit chat with people. You could maybe take requests and things like that. You can also do Q&A. You can encourage your audience to ask you questions about what you're doing. You can do group sessions through the Google Hangouts feature, or you could connect to somebody on Skype and do a screen capture of the person on Skype, and you could draw together that way. I've also done some drawings using DrawPile, which is a collaborative drawing app where multiple people can draw on the same canvas at the same time. So if you want an example of all of those live streaming formats, check out my live streams and my hangouts on my channel. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe to get more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.